I think so. Come on, help us sing this out. Come on. Help me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no 
day that we are. God, we thank you so much for this service. We thank you, Father, for this day. God, we thank you that we're coming together to worship you, to be with you, to hear from you, God. God, we just want to take just a moment and lift up our nation. We continue to lift up our nation before you, God. We lift up our president, all of those in authority. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are working. We don't look at what we see. We don't look at what we hear. But God, I pray that we look to your word. We look to your truth. And we just thank you, Father, that you are working regardless of what we see in here. God, we thank you for this day, March 1st, 2020, that we're here today, God. I thank you for every family that's represented, every household that's represented, every heart that's represented today. God, I pray that our hearts are open to receive from you today, Lord. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. Before you're seated, turn around to someone around you. Tell them that you are glad that they are here this morning and you may be seated. So fun. Happy Sunday. Are you glad guys? Are you guys glad to be at church today? We are so glad that you are here. Listen, if this is your first time, I'm just scanning around and I see some of you I've never seen before. That doesn't mean that you have not been here. But if you are a guest today, we are so glad that you came to be with us this morning at Life United Shreveport. And in the seat back in front of you, there's a card that says the card. Um, you can fill that out for us and you can drop it in the offering containers in a moment. We just want to say thank you so much for coming. How many of you know there are a lot of awesome churches in our city? We're not the only great church in our area, um, even though it's my personal favorite. Um, but those of you that are guests, there are so many great churches that you could have gone to this morning, and we really are sincerely glad that you came with us this morning. Um, I met a guy in first service. He came to the guest center and he'd never been here before. He's like, I don't know what I felt. Like he told me, he goes, I had such low expectation. I was like, he was honest. <laughs> he said, I can't even explain what I felt. I can't explain, he loved the message. You're, you guys, are, we're gonna have an awesome message today and he's coming back next Sunday. So, um, and I just, I'm so thankful. So if you are a guest, we hope that you don't feel like a guest. We pray that you feel like family because that's what you are as soon as you step on our campus. So let's give it up for all of our guests this morning. We're so glad that you're here. And um, at the end of service, I'll come back up. I'll announce we have a gift to give you just to say thank you so much for coming with us. Listen, we are in the middle of a series called Alone. And um, we have some guests today um, that'll be sharing, but um, I do wanna mention about life groups. Guys, we have over 300 people that have signed up and are a part of life groups this spring semester. Technically 303, if you wanna be exact. And then we have 87 life groups that are taking place. And listen, there are still summer clothes because you guys were like on it and we got you've got a lot of groups uh, filled, but we still have some groups that are available. So you can go to the information center. Not all the groups are in here because we couldn't fit all the groups in here, but we do have a menu out at the information center. You can go check that out. And you can also sign up for groups at the information center, or you can go to online, our website at lifeunited.church, and you can sign up for some of the groups there. Life happens, and it's so good to know that you don't have to live life alone. I am personally leading two life groups this semester, and I'm really excited about the relationships that are already forming. And we just wanna make sure that we are constantly giving you guys opportunity to know that you don't have to live life alone either, that you can have relationships, amen. We're so so glad that you're here and I want you guys speaking of life groups check out this awesome testimony of what this life group has done for this awesome couple life groups have improved our marriage and our lives I would say um, we got to learn from other couples about experiences they, they've had and experiences we've had and to try to deal with um, different issues that come up in marriage whether they've been married for one year or 15 years we all are kind of going through the same thing one of the the biggest things that uh, that we got from the marriage life group i, I think was uh, we started praying every every night we yeah, had together yeah together and we we had never done that 
and we're, we're kind of on the same page as to what we're believing for with different issues, whether it's business or children mm -hmm. or, you know, we're since we're doing it together, we're on the same page of exactly what we're believing for. This is what we're standing on. And so it's kind of, I feel like we're stronger together. That's true. Rather than That's true. separately. Really going through, going through the marriage life group gave me confidence to lead one in the future if we... If, yeah. we, if we're and we, we did we had a chance to lead it for um, we did it that one night one Sunday and mm -hmm. we were nervous but it, we, we did it yeah, okay <laughs> it was worth the sacrifice to do it together get child care every other Sunday I don't think we missed one and I would say I mean even all the life groups we've done and led this was by far my favorite one just because we got to do it together and it was more of a Definitely. we met at a date night a lot of times you know we would go grab something to eat afterwards and it was just fun just to ride in the car just us doing spend time together and um, fellowship with other couples come on give it up for life groups what god's doing you know i tell this to the staff all the time uh you know uh, uh, an experience a weekend experience or maybe just a service it'll touch your life but relationships will change your life. Thank you for that overwhelming response, but I'm sticking with my story, right? <laughs> but, but it's true, relationships will change your life. That's the reason we do uh, life groups. We encourage you, if you haven't gotten signed up, get involved in one right now. Hey, I wanna take just a moment and greet everybody that's watching on live stream this morning. We're so thankful that you're a part of this moment, you're a part of this weekend, a part of this service. Life United, let's give everybody that's watching on live stream a great big warm welcome. Thank you so much. If you're in the area, we'd love for you to drop by and say hello to us. I know a little bit great on your device, but we look magnificent in person, so come by and see us. We promise you this, we will treat you just like this is your home. So God bless you. Thanks again for being a part of this service. Hey, I want to talk to everybody um, uh, for just a moment about generosity, about giving. And so sometimes people go, oh, Pastor John, or when Pastor Sam steps up and talks about it, you sort of kind of put your fingers in your ear. Well, put your, get your fingers out and listen to what God wants to say to you. I believe it's important that we are on the same page with God in regards to our money. Okay. The money that we have, the money that we earn, it's so important that we're on the same page with God, that we see it the same way. So if you could look into your bank account or you could look at what you earn, this is how God would see it. He would see some dollars and cents. Okay? He would see a portion of it as dollars and cents. You get paid, he sees a portion of it as dollars and cents. But then there's another portion that he sees over here that he doesn't see it as dollars and cents. He sees it as seed. You say, well, what part is that? Well, that's the tithe and that's offerings. He sees that as seed. So it's important that we see it that way because if we don't, what we'll do is we'll look at all of it as just dollars and cents and we'll take everything and we'll invest it into our world and our life. But the reality of it is, is that when we see it the way God does, we will take that portion, the dollars and cents part, and we will invest it in our life because how many know we need to pay our bills and our debts and, you know, we got to drive and we got to eat, right? But, but, but we also have to remember that it's important that we keep those two separate so we can take the seed part, the tithes and the offerings, and we can bring that to God. And we can sow it in what matters the most and what is making the greatest difference, and that is His kingdom. You see, because the seed part that God sees, the seed part that we should see, that we come and invest and we sow and we give, it makes a difference in eternity. Dollars and cents makes a difference in our life but the seed, when invested, makes a difference in eternity. Is there anybody in this place that's the least bit excited about making a difference in people's lives, being generous, and how the generosity uh, makes a difference in eternity? Is there anybody at all that's kind of halfway excited about taking the seed and sowing it? Listen to, what, listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 about those who sow seed. Verse 10 says, now he who supplies seed to the sower. <laughs> Someone said, I would like God to supply some seed to me. Is anybody here? You, you know how you do that? You sow the seed that you've got. Because it says it, it, he supplies seed to the who, not the keeper, the what, the who, the sower. Watch this. And bread for food will also supply, watch this, and increase your store of seed. 
Increase your store of seed. Is there anybody in here that would love to have more seed to sow? More seed so eternity could be changed. More seed so that people's life. Is there anybody interested in doing that? Well, you're, listen, you are qualified if you are sowing the seed that you have. That's what qualifies you so that God can say, you know what? I can trust them. I'm going to increase, I'm going to increase the store of seed. Watch this. And will also enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Listen, there's dollars and cents and there's seed. Take the seed, the tithes and offerings and invest it in what makes the biggest difference in that's eternity. Amen. Listen, we have two different ways that you can do that here at Life United. One is on site. You can grab the uh, offering envelopes. It's located lots of places around the church, but you've got some right in front of you. See back in front of you. You can take that and put that, um, uh, your tithes and offerings. And this morning, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to be receiving the tithes and offerings in just a few seconds because we have a, a guest speaker. They are a couple that are on fire. They did a phenomenal job. You will be blessed. They did a phenomenal job in the first service. You're going to be really blessed uh, and thankful that you came today. But we're going to be receiving an additional offering for them and their ministry at the end of the service. So you can take the, your tithes and offerings and you can put it in here. Or you can go to our website at lifeunited.church. You can also give there. It's available to give digitally. We encourage you to do that. It's very simple, uh, easy, very simple. And it's, it's, at your, uh, it's available to you all of the time. Amen. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Father, for the privilege. We don't have to do this. We don't have to give, God. We get to. We get to take seed that you've given us and sow it in eternity. So we say thank you for that. We do it, God, as an act of faith, act of love for you, and an act of love for your kingdom that's changing this world. So we give you the praise and the glory and the honor in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Everybody that agrees says a great big Amen. Hey, as the buckets pass you this morning, why don't you stand back up? Also, prayer team, if you'll go ahead and stand up and take your place in the aisles. If you're new to the church, been here just a few times, and you may be wondering, why do we ask these guys with orange lanyards to stand in the, in the aisles? Well, they are part of our prayer team. And you or anybody in the house, in the place this morning, if you need prayer or you know somebody that needs prayer, during worship, step out into the aisle and let one of, the, let one of these individuals pray with you. Because God can do incredible things if we'll just give Him the chance. And He can do that when we pray. Now, let's worship the King of Kings in this place.
Come on, declare it.
there's no better place for us to be than where we are right now. There is no more important place than where we are in this moment. There's nothing more precious. There's nothing greater. There's no place like the place that we're in right now, that we're in your presence. God, in your presence, there's a peace like nothing we can even explain. There's a sense of your love that we really can't, we can't put it into words. But we can't say it is amazing. We can't say it's infinite. We can't say that your love is overwhelming. And so, Father, we know that you paid a great price for this moment. That your son, Jesus, shed his blood so we could have this precious, incredible, amazing moment in your presence. So, Father, we just want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood that he shed. Thank you for the sin bill that he paid. Our sin bill. He paid it. And we just say thank you, Father. Because it's because he paid our debt, he paid our bill, that we get to have this moment. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We love you, God. We love you, Father. And we say this in the name that's above every single name. It is matchless. It, it can't be compared to any other. We say this in the name of Jesus. And everybody that agrees is a great big amen. Before we're seated, I want you to turn to about two or three people. Give them a high five. Give them a high five and say, it is, I'm so glad that you got to sit by me today. Now turn to your second choice or your third choice and say the same thing. I'm so glad that you got to sit by me today. We are in a series, this is our second week in a series that we have titled Alone. And it comes from a moment in time in the first book of the Bible, the, the book of Genesis, that God looked and Adam, and he made this statement. He said, it's not good for man to be what? Alone. But yet, and in life, as Christians, as believers, um, you, you can be doing life. You can have family going. You can have career going. You can have church going. You can have marriage going. But yet, you can still be very alone. Be very alone. And that's not a good place to be because you're isolated. You begin to insulate yourself from what you really need the most. And so this series is focused on how to break out of that cycle, how to break out of that place of being alone. And so what we started last Sunday, Pastor kicked it off, and this, this weekend, I'm telling you, you, I just need to sit down so they can get started, okay? So Steve and Debbie Wilson are in the house. They are a phenomenal, phenomenal couple that they, they invested many years of their life here in the Shreveport, serving uh, God's people here in Shreveport. And, and they just have a, an incredible track record, an amazing uh, reputation. And as a matter of fact, they have this guarantee, if you'll just hear what God says through them in the next 30 minutes, your life will be changed forever and all of your marital problems will be taken care of. So <laughs> that's not true. I'm just joking. But. Amen. But they have since moved. They, they lived in Shreveport, like I said, for many years. And then they, they moved over to this other place. Where's that place again? It's called, is it Dallas? Isn't there a place on Dallas or something like that? They have this team called Cowgirls. Some, never mind. The anointing just left the room. I'm sorry. Father, Holy Spirit, bring it back right now. I'm just going to stop right now. But I, before I sit down, I want you to stand to your feet and give a nice, big, warm, life united welcome to Steve and Debbie Wilson. Come on. Let's give it up for them this morning. We open our hearts to what God has to say through them. 
cowgirls. <laughs> oh. You ain't right. I'll, I'll, tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you what took us to Dallas. It's called grandbabies. Whoop, whoop. So, so true. Uh, can I tell you, it's a joy to be back. Uh, love Pastor Sam. Love Pastor John. Love your church. We were in Shreveport 20 years. And 14 years ago, uh, re we resigned. We resigned from <laughs> uh, being on staff at Summer Grove for 12 years. And we travel and teach marriage conferences all over the nation from one end to the other. And our passion is to uh, kind of get right, right in the middle of where you're living today. And uh, I pray that you didn't come to church to mark off, on your, uh, mark off a little list that says, whoop, went to church. But I pray today that you will allow Jesus, if you will, allow, if you will lay a hula hoop on the floor, and if you'll step inside the hula hoop, and today would you ask Jesus to speak to the person in the hula hoop? Don't sit there and listen for, with ears with your spouse. Don't sit there going, did you hear that? <laughs> listen with ears for yourself. So when uh, Pastor John and Pastor Sam asked us to come and they told us the theme, I mean, my heart just sank. I Ooh. thought, that's our story. That's right. And Steve and I would not be doing what we do today had it not been for where we went and where we were. So I want to just share a little bit. We've been married almost 42 years. And uh, I know that's amazing. It's, uh, it's I to I the point her. we can't remember before each other. Yeah. You know? I married her when I was 10. Thank you. <laughs> But anyway, when I married Steve, he was a youth minister in a church right outside of Kansas City. And when we fell in love, he said to me, Debbie, as long as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to be a youth minister for the rest of my life. Now, little did he know we would get tired. You know, you can only do youth ministry so and, long. And lock-ins are not of Jesus. Can I tell you that? <laughs> When it takes you two weeks to recuperate, you need to move on. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, um, you know, I was so excited because Steve and I loved each other, and we loved the Lord, and we just could not wait to make an impact for the Lord uh, wherever he planted us. That's right. And so we got married, and if I looked back, and I can, there is no doubt in my mind that Steve and I jumped into ministry, not into marriage. That's right. And the reason being, we knew how to do ministry. But we didn't have a clue how to be married. And what I believed with all of my heart is if Steve and I loved each other, which we did, and if we loved the Lord, which we did, that was going to equal the happily ever after, right? I mean, we would never have problems. Now, y'all, we also grew up in the, in the day and age where you walked into the church, you looked good, you acted good, so I guess you are good. Mm. And what that did to us is in that first year of marriage, when we began to struggle, and y'all, our struggles were not big. You know, our struggles were simple things like Steve grew up in a Crest family. I grew up in a Colgate family. <laughs> now, I mean, which one are we going to use? Not an option. And we used two different ones for about a year, you know, and then we, he won over. We're now a Crest family. Amen. But it, it is in those first years that you begin to struggle. And if you don't know what to do when you struggle, you just shove them under the rug and you just keep on going. I mean, that's, that's right. just what we're, what we're taught to do. That's right. And so that's what we did. We jumped into ministry, not into marriage, had no tools, had no help on how to deal with conflict, how to resolve conflict, how to fight fairly, how to know each other's differences and embrace them. We didn't know how to do any of that. And so when you get awkward in your marriage, you'll just get busier. It's a great avoidance tool. That's right. And so that's what Steve and I did. And about the seven-year mark of our marriage, I remember waking up one morning knowing and feeling like I was losing him. It wasn't that I was losing him physically. He was right there beside me. But in the seven years of us not pouring anything into our marriage, all we gave to each other was our leftovers at the, at the end of the mm, day. That's right. I felt like we had just slowly, slowly disconnected. And I thought, you know what, I've got to bring it up. We've got to talk about it. We've got to do something. But I talked myself out of it. Why? Because we're like all of you. We're tired. And I knew that if I brought it up, it would probably cause a fight. He would get defensive. I would get defensive. I'm too tired to fight. And so I didn't bring it up. And I remember laying my head down that night saying, God, would you change us? Would you make us better? Can I tell you something about God? 
He'll make you better. But, hold on. But you've got to do something too. That's right. So, because we were so good at faking it. You know, you know, you know how we fake it? When our kids were little, we, we, we got in the car one Sunday. <laughs> and they didn't have all their clothes on. Or they had them on, but they took them off sometime or I'm going, we where are your shoes? And your shoes do not match. <laughs> and we're driving, and Debbie's in pasture side. She just gets all over their case. I can't believe that. Blah, 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 blah. And then you get to church. <laughs> There's a greeter out there somewhere that never has a bad day. I just want them to have diarrhea someday. I just, <laughs> glad you're here. Mm. But then you walk up to the door and they go, well, praise Jesus. Glad you're here. And your mom and dad go, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. God's good, isn't he? Woo, woo. God's good. And the kids are going. Satan was in the front seat a while ago. <laughs> but, but we put the mask on. Go here with me. We put the mask on. We put the show on. And everything's good. Can I tell you, the only place in life you cannot fake is home. You can fake it at church. You can fake it at work. You can fake it on the soccer field. Drill team squad. You can fake it. High school, you can fake it. But when you get behind the shut doors of your house, reality has to be seen. And so we faked it for 12 years. And let me say this before I continue the story. If we can't come into the church and cry out for help, come on. where can we go? That's right. I would give anything if at the 12-year mark, Steve and I could have walked in our church to anybody and said, help, we're drowning. That's right. But there was no one to turn to. And we've got to become a church where people can walk in and know that they don't have to be perfect and know that anything they're struggling with, there are people here that don't have all the answers, but will come around them and love them, pray for them and support them. Guys, that's what the church is supposed to be. And see, you've got a pastor, you have a staff, you have a church where you can walk in and go, hey, I'm messed up. And they go, we can help. Can I tell you? Uh, don't take that for granted. That's right. Hello? And take advantage of it. Just if this is a safe, anybody, anybody in here not messed up? <laughs> I mean, you're in a safe place of messed up people. But it's a safe place to come in and take your mask off. So anyway, at the 12-year mark, this is what happened. Steve and I are creatures of habit. I don't know if y'all are. The older we get, the worse we get. You know, we're, <laughs> our ruts are getting a little bit deeper. Hello. But anyway, um, this particular Wednesday night, Steve would always do a youth service. We were serving at a church in Tyler, Texas. So we did the youth service, and then we went and got our kids out of child care, got them home, got them a snack, got them bathed, got those boogers to bed as fast as we could um, because why? They were tired and grouchy, so were we. Once we would accomplish that every Wednesday night, I kid you not, I don't know why, but that's just what we did every Wednesday night. Steve would then go into the kitchen and pop popcorn. Now, y'all, we're old. So what I mean by that is there was not a microwave with this button that said popcorn. We had to do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, some of y'all don't have a clue what I'm talking about. In fact, we suggest this for date nights for you millennials. Go home and figure out how to pop popcorn. They're going to burn the house down. <laughs> That grease is going to splatter somewhere, and it's going to get them. But I just tell you, it's the best popcorn. It is the best popcorn. So anyway, Steve would always pop popcorn. He'd bring it into the den. We would turn on the TV, and we would just veg out to Johnny Carson. Jimmy Fallon a say, long time wow. ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's old. All I know to tell you is it was Jimmy Fallon a long time ago. You that's know. right. And, and that's what we would do every Wednesday night, but that's not what happened this Wednesday night. And, guys, it wasn't because I thought about it all day long, and I could not wait. It just hit me. And let me tell you something about if you don't deal with things. That's right. They will build. They don't go away. And they build, and they build, and they build, and they build till there's no place else to go but out. That's right. And so Steve popped the popcorn that night. He came into the den. He went to pick up the remote control, and I looked at him, and I said, Steve, don't turn that on. Now, we never communicated. As long as I wasn't nagging, he thought everything was happy and good. So when I said to Steve, don't turn that on, we could not have been on more opposite hemispheres. He thought that meant something great was about to happen. <laughs> 
could be Jesus <laughs> on a Wednesday night. This is awesome. <laughs> and you know what I say? Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Because then I said the dreaded words no man ever wants to hear, and that is what? Y'all get that everywhere we go. <laughs> everywhere we go. We got to talk. <clears throat> and at that point, I think I was numb. Let's talk about alone. If you never invest in your marriage, if you never nurture it, if you never grow it, you will get to such a lonely place. That's right. And where it will take you is not where you want to go. That's right. And so I looked at Steve and I basically said this. I said, Steve, if this is what marriage is, I don't know that I want it anymore. That's right. Now, y'all, it was not that I wanted divorce. But I couldn't live this way any longer. Something had to shake our world because what I had determined at that moment was, I think I'd rather be lonely and alone than to be lonely right next to him. Can a marriage get lonely? Oh, you better believe it. That's right. But let me tell you something about God. Hmm. He'll meet you right where you are. Thank you. And I, I, before we get to the scripture that we want to share with you today, um, Steve asked me, in that next week, he must have asked me over and over, because I'm telling you, it just shook us up. He must have asked me over and over, Debbie, what is it you need? What is it you need? Just tell me what you need. And I can remember saying to him, my need is so great, but I can't put it into words. I don't know, Steve. I don't know. But years later, I figured out what I needed. And we just kind of want to build on this statement. What I desperately needed is what God gives me every single day, and that's this. Yeah. Steve, I want you to know me fully Come on. and love me still. You see, I believe when God created marriage, hmm. he knew we were going to need someone pretty close to him. Not a perfect person, but someone that would at least move towards loving us in a way that no one else in the world will. And if we neglect that in our marriage, you're going to be lonely till the day you go home. To be fully known and loved still? Ladies? Your husband wants to be fully known and love still. But I'll be honest with you, that scares us to death. But see, I have a God that knows me fully. He knows that there's days, I'm sure none of you are in here like this, there's days I'm a jerk. And God says, oh, come on, Steve. And God says, I love you. And I love you still. And Ephesians 4 is where we're going to go today. And it's in the message. We love the message because it kind of talks to where we live. Paul's talking in Ephesians 4, and he says, In light of all this, while I'm locked up here in prison, uh, do you think that was a lonely time in his life? But he wasn't alone. Hello? While I'm locked up here in prison, I want you to get out there and walk. Nah, better yet, run. I want you to run down the path God's called you to travel. I don't want any of y'all just sitting around on your hands doing nothing. Huh. But I want you to get on the path that God's called you to travel. I want you to do this with humility and discipline. Humility and discipline, not in fits and starts. You know what fits and starts is? Okay, went to church. Okay, I can do that. Tomorrow you're going, nah, I can't. Or I'm going to love my spouse well today, but they didn't respond well, so I'm done. Ooh. That's fits and starts. Paul goes on to say this. So once you get on that path, this is what I need you to do. I want you to steadily pour yourselves out in love for one another. Come on. I want you to be alert at noticing differences. And I want you to be quick at mending fences. Why? Because we were all called to travel down the same path, going in the same direction. That's right. Come on. So stay together, both inwardly and outwardly. Can you feel alone on the path of marriage? Yes. And let me tell you why I think we feel alone. Number one, we don't walk into marriage realizing it's going to take work. Y'all, I would give anything if I could go back to the day I stood at an altar and somebody in the audience go, now hold on, hold on. You do know what you're getting into. 
Because truly, I believe with all my heart when we stand at the altar and we say, I do for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, and sickness in the health, I think honestly, we are saying yes to better, yes to health, and yes to richer. But we are not saying yes to these other things. And so we have got to get to the place that we realize what Paul is saying. We're on a lot of different paths in our life, guys, but one of the main paths God's called us to, if we're married, is the path of your marriage. It is supposed to be a priority underneath God. But we don't put it there. Our marriages are neglected because it gets awkward, because it takes humility. We've got to put our pride down. We have to acknowledge things. When we hit that 12-year mark, I'm just be honest with y'all. This was my attitude. God, if you can fix him, then maybe we'll make it. But little did I know that God was going to hold a big mirror in front of my face and make me acknowledge the things that I was doing Mm -hmm. to cause this disconnection, to cause this unhappiness. Guys, if you feel alone in your marriage, I think it's because of this. I think Paul was so wise, and he wasn't even married Paul said at the beginning of Ephesians 4, he said, in light of all this, in light of all of what? You have to go back to Ephesians 3 to see what he's talking about. That's right. Ephesians 3 says. Ephesians 3 says, and I pray that you may have power along with the saints. I pray that you may have power. When's the last time you had power in your life? And I pray that you may have power along with the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is God's love for you. To know this love which passes all understanding, I don't understand why God loves me sometimes. To know this love which passes all understanding so that he can fill you to the fullness of the measure of God. I don't know about you, but I got leaks. Anybody else got leaks? You know what God does? He keeps filling through the good times and the bad times. Can I just give you a side note here? At the 12-year mark, is the worst day of my life, men... My wife's leaving me, she's taking the kids, and I'm on staff of a Baptist church, and I'm going to get fired because I got divorced. Worst day of my life. Because of the pain in our life, God birthed a ministry. Hello? Some of you are going through misery now in your life. Would you not go, well, well, if God's a God of love, he wouldn't let that happen. No, God is a God of love, and he'll walk you through the misery. He won't, he won't let you escape it sometimes because through the misery, God will give you a ministry. Through the pain, God will give you a pulpit. God will bring people in your life that says, hey, this is what I'm going through, and you're going, whoa. Whoa. Man, my wife and I just went through that five years ago. And somebody will say, well, you don't understand. You're going to go, no, I do understand. You see, I have a God that plugs holes in my bucket so I can get filled to the fullness of the measure of God. Now, let me ask you a question. Paul said, in light of all this, I want you to get out there and run. I want you to get out there and run, not walk. Down the path God's called you to travel. What's taking you off the path? Every once in a while, I mean, a lot of times, Debbie and I, we go to marriage camp, we fly to a city that we don't know. We fly into the airport. We get a rental car. I'm the driver. She's the navigator. I'm not a good navigator. Bad. We're driving in the car, and, and we're, you know, it's probably an hour outside the airport city that we flew into. And Deb's going, okay, we're real close to where we're going. I said, oh, so I'm glad we're going to be there. She goes, okay, our next ex- the next exit is ours. I thought, awesome. Didn't realize we were that close, but whoo, glad we're there. I, 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 I take the exit. <laughs> Deb goes, where are you going? <laughs> and I said, you said the next exit is our exit. She goes, this is a roadside park. It's not our exit. Now, let me ask you a question. Where do you go at a roadside park? What's at a roadside park? A bathroom. A bathroom, and you can buy a Coke 
in a cantina if it hadn't been broken into? <laughs> Roadside parks don't go anywhere. Some of you in your life, can I two by four your forehead with a little love and grace? Walk with me here. Some of you have taken the exit in your life. What's your, what's your exit? Divorce, abortion, alcoholism, drugs, abuse. You, you, you can fill in some. And see, Satan's taking you out of the game. He's going, take the exit. Take the exit. You're unworthy of the highway. Take the exit. And you exit off on the highway and you think, well, this is what I deserve. See, I have a God in Romans 8.1 that says, in Christ, there's no condemnation. You know what that says to me? Romans 8.1, you know what Steve's version is? In Christ, God wants you to get back on the path that he's called you to travel. Now, what's your excuse? See, Satan always gives us an excuse. Yeah, but Steve and, De Steve and Debbie from Dallas, you don't understand what I've gone through. I don't understand what you've gone through. I don't, underst I don't understand the pain you've gone through. I don't. But with grace and mercy, God will walk with you through the lonely times in your life. And sometimes the lonely times... You know, Paul was lonely, but he wasn't alone. Sometimes God is going, I'm trying to get your attention. So today, what are you going to do with that? Let me tell you what path I think we tend to sit in. I don't know about you, but when I got married, I thought this man was going to be 100% responsible for my happiness. That's what I thought he bought into. Can I just tell you something? No man can be responsible for your happiness. Thank you. And so Paul knew. He said, listen to me. You can't do what I'm asking you to do in chapter 4 until you understand this. Debbie Wilson, you have got to grasp. Thank you. How wide and long and high and deep is my love for you. And, and I wanted to talk him out of it because I, I, I don't think I deserved it. That's right. He said, Debbie, until you grasp it, I can't feel you. And as long as you are empty, you will use every person in your life, and mainly your spouse. You will make them try to fill a void in you that only God can fill. That's right. Amen. Once God fills you to the fullness of the measure of his love, then for the first time in your life, you have the ability to love and you have the ability to receive love. I mean, I wanted to cry as we were singing. I've met the author of my story <laughs> and only he can love me to the fullness of what I need in order for me to know how to love Steve <laughs> and those Ooh. that God's entrusted to me. Mm. So, guys, that is what you have to do with humility and discipline is you have to sit and you have to say, God, I know, I know I'm not lovable, but I know you choose me. And so fill me, help me to grasp that you love me no matter what I've done, no matter where I've been, because you are a God of second, third, fourth, fifth chances. Thank you. That's right. Once you do that, guys, hmm. then Paul says, now, now you got that. Now that you're filled to the fullness of the measure of me, this is what I need you to learn to do. I want you to steadily pour yourselves out in love for one another. He said steadily. He didn't say every once in a while. Can I tell you what my visual is of steadily? Steadily is when I turn my water faucet on, it starts steadily coming out. And or, it does not stop until I turn it off. Or there's a disconnection somewhere. Whoa. Some of you are trying to turn the water faucet on, you ain't connected. Maybe you go to church. I asked Jesus, I got saved at the age of seven. Jesus transformed my life at the age of 18. Filled me full of this, filled me full of Jesus. Are you disconnected? What? I'm turning it on, nothing's happened. God says, I want you to receive the steadily, God steadily loving you. And when you steadily love, it'll flow. 
So I want to share with you just one of the ways that Steve and I learned to steadily love. Come on. It was a game changer. Y'all, there was a lot of things at that 12-year mark that we had to figure out. And once again, I want you to know, we didn't have a lot of resources, but can I just tell you, God was enough. God was enough. That's right. We went to the beach after we hit that wall at the 12-year mark. We were in intensive care. We were not good. So Steve said, Debbie, we got to get out of here. We got to figure out what we've got to do to get our marriage in the place that God needs it to be. So we picked up our three young kids, and we drove to Gulf Shores, Alabama. And for a week, we sat on the beach. Um, can I tell you something about your children? They know when you're not good. Don't think that they don't. And it doesn't matter how young or old they are. They know. So when you're not good, they're not good. So I remember that week. It was just not fun. I think I cried all week. Steve and I used that week to kind of just spill out the hurt that we had done to one another in those 12 years, the inconsiderations, the little things. We didn't have big things, That's right. but all those things built up. And at the end of the week, we felt like, okay, we're strong enough to go home. We're strong enough to go home and say, we are going to figure this thing out. We are going to work on our marriage. If no one around us is working on marriage, we're going to work on our marriage. Even if that means we are lonely and all isolated by ourselves, it doesn't matter. And so the last day that we were there, I was in the uh, condominium and I was packing up all of our clothes and stuff to go home. Steve walked into the condominium, walked into the bedroom and I started crying. Now, no man ever wants their wife to cry because you don't know what to do with our tears. Amen. And so Steve looked at me and said, whoa, Deb. He said, I feel like we're way better today than when we got here a week ago. And I said, Steve, we are better. And I said, but I don't want to go home. Yeah. Because I'm afraid we're going to go home and do the same thing that got us to this place. Hello. That's right. I remember Steve sat there for a few minutes and thought, he's a psychologist, and so they're always thinking. You know, they're always thinking about what they're going to do, what they're going to say. He thought for a few minutes, and then he looked at me, and he goes, babe, I don't know what else to do, but I'm going to make a vow to you. Now, when a man says he's going to make a vow to you, you know it's serious. He said, I'm going to make a vow to you that when we get home, we're going to carve out a period of time every day of our life. That's right. Maybe it's just five minutes some days. Maybe it's 10 minutes, 30 minutes doesn't matter, but we're going to carve out a period of time. And every day I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to ask me the same question. He said, it's the only place I know where to start. I remember sitting there thinking, what is the question? I couldn't imagine. He said, I'm going to ask you every day, how is your heart today? Yeah. Not how is your heart yesterday, or how do you think your heart's going to be tomorrow, but how is your heart today? Now, let me tell you why that was so crucial. I think I must have said to Steve over that week, I must have said to him over and over, Steve, somewhere in these 12 years, That's right. you lost my heart. Man, can I just tell you something about your wives? We never stop feeling, ever. Amen. Our heart is constantly thinking and feeling. Now, let me tell you what I know about you. Steve and I'll be riding in the car. I love to know what's going on in his heart and in his mind. So I'll look over and I'll say, babe, what are you thinking? He'll go, nothing. <laughs> and I'll go, how in the world do you think nothing? Teach me. I don't know how to think nothing. It's awesome. <laughs> Isn't it, guys? Put that baby in neutral and we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> she doesn't ever put it in neutral. I'm going, yeah, stop. And then, and then I'll go, you know, what? I, I know what she's thinking. Ladies, I discovered, you know what I discovered about Debbie? I cannot read her mind. Because about the time I got her mind read, it changes. So I stopped, I stopped trying to read her mind. But y'all, one of the things that I think I desperately wanted is I wanted to be able to share my feelings with him. If he's not available, then I'm going to have to find somebody. And that's why, girls, we get too attached to our children. Whoa. And sometimes we get too attached to friendships. Now, let me... When this is supposed to be the one that we share our deepest, yeah. innermost thoughts and feelings to. Now, ladies, th this, is, this is huge. Tell me how your heart is. If your husband goes home today and goes, all right, Steve, Steve and Debbie said he got to talk about your heart. <laughs> all right, baby. All right, tell me about your heart. Do not go off on him for an hour. 
Well, I'd be better if it wasn't for You know what he's going to go? You know what he's going to say? Ain't going, there. Again. Ain't going there again. <laughs> and then you know what you say, ladies? I'll two by four your forehead. I don't understand why my husband won't talk to me. I know. <laughs> ladies, when Debbie said, tell me how your heart is. I'll be honest with you, uh, I didn't know where my heart was. And I said to Debbie, I said, would you be patient with me? I really want to find out where my heart is because work and life and kids and finances and marriage and job and callous our heart, and we take that on as our responsibility, ladies. And when you say, tell me how your heart is, tell me, tell me now, tell me how your heart is, you were going, whoa. I don't know. It took me a little time for Debbie, for me to go, okay, Debbie, here's where my heart is. And she's going, really? And y'all, that was a and game she'd go, changer. You know, what, you know what she'd say? Tell me more. And I'd talk a little bit and she goes, tell me more. Don't try to add to our story. Guys, don't try to fix her. Amen. Honey, tell me what. Tell me how your heart is. Well, this is how I am. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> if you will allow the Holy Spirit to fix your husband, your spouse, let's go there, he does a better job than you. Woo! It's quiet in here. <laughs> if you'll let the Holy Spirit work, he'll work. So one of the rules to that, how's your heart, is we chose that we would be honest, but we would do it with honor. Yes, that's right. Because for 12 years, Steve would say, how are you? And I'd say, fine. You're not fine, but you know why you say fine? Because you don't think they want anything else. And so Steve said, fine's never going to be the answer. We're going to get in touch with our hearts. And he said, Debbie, I want to hold your heart like no one else. And can I tell you, that's when <laughs> I began to be fully known yes. and love still. Paul steadily, goes, steadily. Paul goes on to say, be uh, alert. You're different. You're different. Embrace the differences. You know what I think happens? <laughs> I, I think Jesus does this because he brings us together. Well, you know, opposites attract. Do you not agree? <laughs> but what happens is after marriage, they attack. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, so I, th and, and we need to hurry and pull this together. <laughs> You're not listening fast enough. Uh, I think Jesus does this. He goes, mm, oh, let's take him. <laughs> oh, oh, let's take her. <laughs> let's put them together. They're going to need me now. <laughs> Isn't that true? I think Jesus has got a sense of humor. I hope so. I think Jesus in heaven goes, hey, angels, watch this. <laughs> you know why he does that? Because he loves you enough. Your family doesn't need two of you. I'll let that soak in. Do I need to say that again? Your family doesn't need two of you. Debbie's a one by herself. She's awesome. Steve's the one by himself. He's pretty good. <laughs> in, the wor this, in the world, this does not add up. But when you put the two of us together with Jesus, we're a three. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Are we different? Yes. Are we different? Yes. But you know what? Debbie's differences rub on me a little bit and make me better. My differences... Not very often, but yes, they, do. they make Debbie better. S embrace the differences. And don't be critical. Come on. Quit trying to change your spouse. Quit trying to change them. Ooh. We can spend years trying to change them. Why don't you go back and remember the person that you married? The qualities that they had, they still have. So tear up your picture of who you think they should be and accept them. Keep the person. Tear up your picture. Last thing that Paul says is, I, would, I want you to just take your time when it comes to forgiveness. <laughs> That's not what Paul said. Paul said, I want you to be quick. 
at mending fences. Let me ask you a question. Are you a grace giver? I don't know about you, but we definitely harm each other. We definitely do things that we wish we had enough. And we could hold it over our spouse forever and ever and ever. But let me ask you something. Is it helping your marriage? Are you a grudge holder? Are you a powder? Quick and mending fences. We have a friend in Longview that's got some cows. His neighbor calls him one day and says, Hey, Mitch, your cows are out of your fence. Called him at 2 in the morning. 2 in the morning. And, I, and we were doing a Bible study. I said, Mitch, what happens when your neighbor calls at 2 in the morning and says your cows are out? I said, you lay in bed and go, it is 2 o'clock. I said, what do you do? And he goes, and, he, and I could see him think, you stupid city kid. <laughs> he goes, I get out of bed. I go get my cows back in the fence. I mend the fence. I said, why do you do that? Watch this. He said, because if I don't, I'm going to lose what is valuable to me. Forgiveness. Now watch, walk here with me today. If you have a hard time forgiving here, just take the mask off. If you have a hard time forgiving here, you, you hold grudges and you pout and you have to have your way. If you have a hard time forgiving here, you probably have a hard time understanding this forgiveness here too. Mask her off. See, Jesus loves you every once in a while. He loves you all the time. <laughs> but every once in a while, God will do some things. He'll pull the rug out from underneath your life to get your attention. Amen. He'll walk you through, and then he'll say, it is time for you to get back on the path I've called you to travel. Y'all, the person that hurt you can't heal you. Did you hear what I said? That's right. Why do we waste time waiting for the person that hurt us to give us what we need? They, they can't. So go to the Father. He'll give you all the ability to forgive. You know, I don't know about you, but the reason I forgive quickly to this day is because I'm in constant reminder that every day that I step on God's heart, he keeps loving me. Out of that gratitude, who am I to not hold, to not give grace right. and give forgiveness, especially here? I, let, uh, let me pour the, pull this together real quick. I know we're I know out we're of time. time a little bit. Why are we supposed to do all this? Why are we supposed to steadily love? Why are we supposed to embrace differences? And be alert at those differences. Why are we supposed to be quick at many fences? Because he said we were all called to travel down the same path, go in the same direction. Let me tell you what I know to be true to this day. And trust me, I've been through enough. I get it. If this relationship is not good, then life becomes totally about me. If we're not good, I'm thinking, why can't he do that right? Why can't he do this? Why isn't he romantic? Why didn't he talk to me? Why didn't he pick up the kids? And it becomes all about me. Yeah. But I don't know if you know this. We're not here for us. Hmm. A few years back, it's been probably eight years, our oldest granddaughter was four then. We were all at the beach one summer, one week in the summer. Morgan Lily walked into the kitchen. I was cooking breakfast. She's a sassy, cute little thing. She walked in the kitchen and she said, Dee Dee, that's my name, sweetest name there ever was. She said, Dee Dee, do you know why I exist? She's four. And I'm thinking, whoa, somebody's taught her something. So I thought, I got to get this right. So I thought about it for a few minutes and then I got down on her level and I said, oh, Morgan Lily. I said, you exist so that your Dee Dee can love you forever and ever and ever, and she said, no, Dee Dee. <laughs> she said, I exist to glorify God. Wow. Okay, but don't clap until you realize that's why you're here. Yeah. And this relationship is a picture of the gospel to that world out there. That's right. You got to get this together. And I know the one who can help you do that. So don't sit in dysfunction. The only Figure out how to love. The only Bible some of your friends are going to read is your marriage. 
Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. How did he love the church? He died for her. It's time for some of you today to get on the right path because Satan's taking you out of the game. He didn't say take your time. He said run back to the path I've called you to travel and then let Jesus and then grasp how wide and long and high and deep God's love is for you and then walk in the fullness and the freedom of Jesus because some of you are alone and you have a Savior going, hey, I don't want you to walk alone. I'm here authentically come walk with me. Would you pray with us? Father, I love you today. Thank you. Uh, mm. God, thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for knowing we're different. Yes. Father, help us to understand steadily loving each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you for knowing you want to fill us to the fullness of the measure of God. Yes. But God, none of that's going to happen until we authentically grasp your love for us. Yes. So today, today, help us to be obedient to your calling on our life to run, not walk, mm -hmm. to you today so that we're not alone. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let me say this before we give it over to Pastor John. I know we only had the time today to just kind of tip the iceberg on some of these issues. If you need help, we've written two books that will move you into what we're talking about, that will help you to learn how to steadily love and embrace differences and be quick at many fences and make your marriage exactly what God created it to be. Take advantage of that resource. If you need us, we, you can reach us by email. We are for you. God bless you. Those resources are in the lobby, the lobby, and I need, we're, st we're not done service now, so let's be as still as we possibly can. Um, it's through the double doors to the right, and it's the big, long, big open hallway. You can't, you can't miss it. It's where our kids' ministry and all that is at. And uh, the table is set up there. Um, what a great message. Was this not rich? Are you not thankful that you came this morning? We're going to receive an offering for them in just a few moments, and you can make your checks out to Life United and we'll take all of the funds together and give them a nice big blessing. How many believe it's important that we bless those who come to bless us? All right, so we're gonna make sure So you just be a part of that. We're gonna take care of that in just a moment. But I like what Steve was talking about earlier about your own path and then all of a sudden you take the wrong exit and you find yourself at that, that, that place, that place that's going nowhere. It's that rest place. It's a place that you're, again, stuck. Maybe, just maybe, you are there today, not just in your relationship and your marriage, but maybe you are there spiritually. Maybe that's happened to you and God, and you just feel like that you're stuck. Maybe it was because of a decision, a series of decisions, maybe some choices that you made. I'm not sure how you ended up at that place, but nevertheless, you find yourself there right now. The good news is you don't have to stay there. The good news is God is, is, is pulled off with you and say, hey, come on, let's get back on the path. Let's get back on the highway. God is speaking to a lot of people in this room right now about that because you are beating yourself up because you feel like that God, you've done some things and you have, but you also feel like that God has left you. He hasn't left you. He's there ready to give you another shot at this with him. He's ready. Will you bow your head just for a moment because I love to make this a very private time because this is between you and God. But if you're here this morning and you, in your heart, in your mind, you're saying, I have got to get my relationship with God right. I can't live at this, this rest place any, any longer. I've got to get back on that path. Well, how do you do that? Well, you surrender to his love. You give him control of your life. You surrender to the goodness of God. You surrender to Jesus Christ. That's how you do it. So in just a moment, we're going to pray this prayer. This is not just a ritual. It's not just, this is very serious. It's very precious. It's very holy. But as a church, we're going to pray this prayer. It's a prayer of commitment. It's a prayer of surrender where we're saying and we're meaning, Jesus, we give you control of our life. We surrender to your grace and your love. But if you're one that's in that place, that stop, stopping point, in that rest stop, you're not going anywhere, but you want to get on the path that God has for you, 
and you say, Pastor John, when I pray that prayer, I'm going to mean it because I'm getting back on that path. Would you raise your hand right now? Nobody's looking around, but I just want to know. Thank you. I see you in the center. But when you pray this prayer, you're meaning it. Thank you. I see you to my right. I see you in the center. Yes, I see you to my left. This is serious. This is important. Again, it's very holy. It's very personal. So let's pray this prayer together, church. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that you love me. I thank you for your grace. I'm so thankful for your mercy. Father, I surrender right now to you. I surrender to your love. I surrender to your son, Jesus. I believe that he is my Savior. And today I allow him to be my Lord because I give him control of my life right now. Thank you, Father, for this chance. Thank you, Father, for not giving up on me. Thank you, Father, for being my Father. In Jesus' precious name. Everybody that agrees is a great big... Hey, several people in the room gave their life, surrendered, gave Jesus control of their life today. Do you know what we do at Life United? We blow the roof off this place because we're excited about it. The angels are doing it in heaven, and so do we right now in this place. Amen. Now, now listen, 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 listen. If you raised your hand, listen, this is so important. If you raised your hand, we're not rushing through this moment, so be still. We're still going to do this. Still got an offering to take. A few little announcements. If you raised your hand a moment ago, will you please grab the card in front of you that says the card. You gave me the privilege. You gave me the privilege of leading you in that moment. Now, let me help you with something else. If you don't take some steps beyond where you are, you will end up exactly where you were at when you walked through the doors. We want to help you take the step to get on that path. You've got to do this. You've got to do your part. Grab the card located in the seat back in front of you. Just fill out the information real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you some information. I'm not going to come knock on your door later. I'm just going to send you some information letting you know that we know that you made that decision and we're, going to, we're here to help you with the path to get back on that path. That's all we're going to do. You have my word. So if you will do that, make sure that you, you drop that card in the offering plate, excuse me, the offering container in just a few moments as we uh, honor our guest speakers who, who came uh, th this, this morning today to bless us with such an incredible truth. Let's give Pastor Lindsay a great big warm welcome as she wraps up the service today. So good. I just want to encourage you with that message. I had the honor to sit in both services, um, but that message was for singles too. So I know growing up when I was single, I was like, I don't want to hear marriage stuff. Like I'm not even married, whatever. Um, but everything that they said today was so applicable for relationships in general. And so I just want to ask you as a sister in Christ to please go back and listen to it. I'm um, not just through marriage lenses, but also through relationships. And most of the principles they talked about, we emphasize and encourage that type of relationship through life groups. So just wanted to throw that plug on there and in there because it is truth. Wasn't that so good? Listen, I just pray that they that they opened up your heart to some things and uh, I pray that you're going to give generously. Um, I pray that you'll go um, get the resources and uh, we're just so glad that they came in. If you are a guest, we really hope that you enjoyed today. And right at the end of service, we're going to be dismissed in just a moment. You can go out these back doors. There's a room that says guest center. We have a gift, a, a bag of goodies. We just want to give you to thank you so much for coming. And so what we're going to do now, if you're ready to give or you've got your cards um, to put in the containers and go ahead and receive that. And uh, as the ushers are doing that, we have a lot of things happening at Life United. And so if you want to know what's going on, Pay attention to our video. We love you so much. Hey everyone, it's Katie and I have a quick question for you. Why are some of you not following us on social media yet? We have too much fun for you to be missing out on it. So if you wanna join the party, just go ahead and follow us right now. Now here's what's coming up. Join us tomorrow as we come together for a time of prayer. We'll be praying over our church, the community, and the world. We'll see you here in the sanctuary at 6.30. Our next family table is this Wednesday. 
this is a great time to come together and enjoy good food as a church family. The cost is $8 for adults and $5 for kids, and all of our money goes to support our outreach team. Then we have a time of worship later that night. It's a powerful time of ministry, so come expecting God to move on March the 4th. By now you've heard of our Four More campaign. That's what we're doing to help get more guests to the church. Here's Sam to explain a new display that we set up to help keep track of our progress. Take it away, Sam. Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Your boy, Sam, you know who I am. We have a great way to show our progress during our Four More campaign. For every guest you bring, you're gonna take a puzzle piece, this right here, from one of the outside containers, and you're gonna put it in the center. That was easy. One guest equals one puzzle piece. If you've already brought a guest this year, do not worry about it. You can go ahead and still move your puzzle pieces to the center. So easy. We need your help to have this display finished by the end of 2020 this year. We can get it done, but not without your help. So make sure you bring your forward. All right, so I wanna go ahead and invite our uh, prayer partners to go up here and come up to the front. If you need prayer, these men and women of God know how to pray for you. We hope you have a great week. You are dismissed. I am because the I am tells me 